This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Merry Christmas. We are still within the 12 days of Christmas, so we can still say that, okay? In the life of the church, we got 12 days of Christmas. And I can also say, Happy New Year. We will end this coming week, uh, actually on Saturday, will be the Epiphany of our Lord. So actually today in our worship, we'll be uh, pulling elements from all three of those uh, uh, observances and celebrations uh, in our worship today. And uh, we pray God's blessings uh, uh, as we gather today around his word and sacrament. Uh, The message today will focus on the epistle reading that we'll hear from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and the title of our message uh, today is simply Rejoice Always, and a good uh, theme as we head into the new year. Uh, We welcome uh, those who are guests today, and we invite everyone to, uh, uh, we we invite our guests, I should say, to fill out a Connect card, and you can place that uh, in the offering plate uh, later on in the service. Uh, As you walked in, in addition to the service folder, hopefully you received also the uh, uh, blue prayer booklet that contains uh, prayer requests that we received uh, this week, and uh, please uh, do take this with you to make it part of your prayer life uh, in the coming week. Also, uh, you received hopefully coastlines uh, that contains the announcements for uh, life uh, activities and events in our life of our congregation, and so uh, please be sure to take a look at that. Uh, One announcement I've been asked to make is uh, whether you purchased a a poinsettia uh, to adorn the altar area or not, uh, you're free to uh, uh, take one uh, following the service today. So uh, all of those that, uh, uh, we we want them all to have a home, let's put it that way. So uh, if you want these poinsettias to have a home, please uh, take one. Uh, with you following the service today, except the white one. The white one uh, stays, uh, stays put. Uh, that's, uh, if you were here Christmas uh, Eve or day, uh, it's a custom that I started in my, all of my congregations where uh, the white one uh, symbolizes uh, uh, that we are united in worship with those who have gone before us and they who worship the newborn king but on another shore and, and in the greater light of heaven. Um, also, if you haven't done so already, p- please pick up our, um, our members, that is, uh, please pick up your box of offering envelopes for the year 2024. Uh, those are on, in the hallway around the, the corner there, and so we want as many of those uh, picked up uh, as uh, possible. Thank you, Sue, for uh, uh, substituting for uh, uh, Denise today on the organ, and also uh, to uh, my daughter, Becca, who will be singing later on in the uh, service during the offering. Uh, so uh, may the Lord uh, richly bless our worship today, and uh, the worship of the newborn King uh, continues as we join in singing our opening hymn, Angels from the Realms of Glory. Let us stand to sing.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs>
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, we commit to your mercy and forgiveness the year now ending and commend to your blessing and love the times yet to come. Good morning. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound to pro proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. We read responsibly from Psalm 126. When the Lord resort the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our mouths shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. Those who sow in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. He who goes out weeping, bearing his seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. The epistle is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast what is good, abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand and sing.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the second chapter. Glory Glory to you, you, O Lord. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. And they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, life of life, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiping glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We continue in the Burgundy Hymnal as we sing hymn 387. Thank you. 
How was your Christmas? How, was it a good one? I hope it was a good one. Actually, that, that, that's kind of what we hope for every Christmas, right? That it's a good one. I think we all hope that Christmas uh, gives us uh, some of the best times of the whole year. But let's be honest. Christmas is not always the best of times. Sometimes things don't go the way we had planned. Did anybody, think, anybody have something that, that where your plan didn't exactly work out this Christmas with anything? Okay. Sometimes, uh, let's just say, I mean, it could be minor. The decorations fall down. I mean, w Sue and I, we were going to do Christmas in Florida right. So we were, we have a, now we have a screen in Lanai, and we, I was going to put up lights on the Lanai so we could turn the, the Christmas lights on and just go out there and sit. Well, the weekend we went to California to see my daughter's uh, Christmas concert, we came back here to Florida, and there was evidently a lot of wind of that weekend because the lights were all my work of putting them up. They're all now down on the ground. Okay, that didn't go exactly as planned. Sometimes the meal gets burnt. Okay, sometimes Uncle Ralph, I don't know if you have an Uncle Ralph, Sometimes Uncle Ralph starts talking politics again, and we're like, no, it's Christmas. Or the household company becomes a little like fish. <laughs> you know, after three days or so, maybe it starts to smell a bit. You know? Or maybe your company is, is just fine. Or perhaps, on the more serious note, accidents happen out of the blue, or a bad illness hits us like a truck, or even more sadly, death visits our life. As I mentioned last Sunday morning, the opening of Charles Dickens's novel entitled A Tale of Two Cities describes the way Christmas can feel for many of us. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness. It was the epic of belief, it was the epic of unbelief. It was the season of light, it was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope, it was the winter of despair. We had everything before us and we had nothing before us. The holiday season can often be a time of contrast. It's a time of prosperity, and it can also be a time of poverty. It's a season of goodwill and a season of ugly greed. Christmas is a time of family togetherness, and for others it can be a time of excruciating loneliness. It's a season of light. It's a season of darkness. Christmas is the spring of hope and is the winter of acute despair. Now, don't get me wrong. We all want the holidays to be the best of times. That's why we decorate and donate, shop till we drop, we put up trees, hang tinsel, cook turkeys, Wrap-up toys. We all want a holly jolly Christmas. But let's be honest, as much as we want the holidays to be the best of times, sometimes they can end up being the worst of times. Or they can be somewhere in between. As much as we want the new year to give us some good times, the best of times, Sometimes a year gives us the worst of times. Think back to 2020. 
right? Sometimes, actually, most of the time, again, a year gives us a little bit of both. That's why today's epistle reading from 1 Thessalonians, while it may sound like a, a great scripture reading for to enter a new year, seems to be, at least on the surface, a little artificial and a, quite a bit unrealistic. Rejoice always, St. Paul says. Rejoice always at all times? Really? Is that realistic? We almost want to say, hey, Paul, how about when it's the worst of times? Just what is there to rejoice about? Where is the joy to the world when it's the worst of times? Where in a Merry Christmas seems like a lot of make-believe, and a happy new year is nothing but a pipe dream. And we can think, if Christmas is supposed to be merry, well, it's, maybe it's merry for someone else, for other people. If a new year is happy, well, that happiness some, seems to be in other people's lives. Because I've got problems that no one else can relate to. My parents had a lot of hang-ups, and they passed them all down to me. And my siblings, well, we don't always get along. In fact, we never get along, especially this time of year. And my health, well, it's not all that great, and it's too late to do anything about this mess that is called my life. So how in the world can St. Paul honestly say, Rejoice always. Why would he suggest such a syrupy sounding sentiment? I'll tell you why. St. Paul knew about the angelic announcement. I bring you good news of great joy. For whom? You read the Bible, it's not for some of the people. It's not for the good people over there or the people who have everything in their life together. No, this is good news of great joy for all the people. Joy is the gift that Christ gives to everyone, and he gives it especially to you. Now, please hear what I'm about to say. This is very important. There is a huge difference between happiness and joy. Those are not synonymous terms. That's a fancy word, way of saying they're not the same. <laughs> External gifts like health and wealth and family are awesome blessings from God those things make us happy. But, now this is a big but, those things are not essential for joy. Why is that? Well, happiness is determined by what's going on around me. Things that happen around me make me happy or don't make me happy. Now, I cannot control that. Joy, though, is determined by what's going on inside of me. And God has taken control of that. He sent Jesus. You see, Jesus didn't have a lot of reasons for earthly happiness. He didn't become an emperor, or a statesman, or a general, or an investment banker. He was born and then placed in an animal feeding trough to a blue-collar father and a teenage mother. As an adult, Jesus had no home. He even said, foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Jesus was a traveling preacher who washed feet. 
you ask me, that's not really been the key to making it big in life. And then this, the St. Paul says, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Death on a cross was reserved for slaves and thieves and murderers, the lowest of the low. Those who crucified Jesus ripped his skin, burst his arteries, severed his nerves. It brought unimaginable pain. In spite of it all, though, Jesus exuded joy. Poverty couldn't take it away. Disappointment and rejection could not take it away. Even death on a cross could not take away his joy. Hebrews tells us so much that who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. So what does it all mean? Well, it means this for today. No matter what this past year was like for you, no matter what the coming year will be like for you, and no matter what life may be like right now, this one great truth makes everything worthwhile. The truth that Jesus Christ was born to die for you and then rise again for you. From his cross and empty tomb, he freely gives us joy. Unlimited, undeniable, and unending. And it's for you and me. Now, how can we be so sure? Again, the angel reminds us, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. All the people, including the magi, the wise men, or as my dad called them, the wise guys. Uh, uh, this, for them, this joy was great. Matthew tells us that when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And Jesus later said, no one will take your joy from you. Why is that? Remember, happiness is determined by what's going on around me. I can't control that. Joy is determined by what's going on inside of me. And God has taken control of that by sending to me Jesus, who is the doorway to deliverance, the pathway to peace, and the gateway to glory. His mercy is matchless. His love never changes. His grace is sufficient for every day. His word is enough, and his reign is righteous forevermore. And no one will take that joy from you. True joy from the Lord stems from the, it stems the tide of gloom and despair. It brings confidence in the midst of confusion, hope in the midst of uncertainty, and calm in the midst of life's chaotic storms. But my friends, again, please do not confuse happiness and joy. They are not the same thing. There are happy Christmases, and there are some sad Christmases. Maybe you've had a few sad Christmases. There are happy New Years, and there are sad New Years. And there are some that are both. It all depends on what's happening around us. But joy, on the other hand, is dependent on what's happening in us. And the birth of Jesus is God's commitment to send you and me, the Holy Spirit, who comes inside to heal our hurts, to forgive our filth, and to redeem our wretchedness. Whether this last day of 2023 is for you the best of times, or the worst of times, or whether it's just a cold day, or as we would say in Wisconsin, a little chilly. 
Regardless, the birth of Jesus, announced by the angels, witnessed by the shepherd, and marveled by the magi, leaves us finally with only one response. Rejoice always. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God that pass all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now come before the Lord, as he, is as he has graciously invited his children to do. And we come before him in prayer. And as we come to him in prayer, we lift up to the Lord all those whom we have named on our prayer sheet. We've also been asked to uh, name and, list and lift up the following people. We pray for the family and friends of Gail Manette. Uh, she was a friend of SOTC, and she uh, died on December 25th. Uh, we pray for Claude. This is a friend of uh, Carolyn Ray Sauter, uh, who is battling cancer. And we also uh, pray for Ray and Carol Sauter, uh, members who are back in church. And we give thanks that they are back in church after going through a, a rough spell uh, in their lives. So let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, eternal Father and giver of every good gift, we commit to your mercy and forgiveness the year now past. Forgive us our sins where we have done wrong. Work in our hearts true repentance and faith and redeem us from all the evil and hurts of this past year. Lord, you have shown us hard times, and you have exposed many idols among us. Yet if we are faithless, Christ remains faithful, and he will not deny himself. Lord, help our unbelief, that we would trust in you always, and may know that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the many mercies and gifts you showered upon us in this past year. You have given life, you have healed and comforted. You have provided for our, our spiritual and physical well-being. You are the Lord of life and take care of us every day. All this you have done not because we deserve it, but only out of your love for us in Jesus our Savior. Lord, comfort and sustain all of your children who suffer from any sickness, any need, affliction, or grief. And we include, Lord, all of those whom we have named, together with those that we now lift up to you silently in our own hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, even as darkness covers our world, you make your church to shine with the brightness of Jesus Christ. You have preserved our congregation in the faith for another year. We give you thanks for your blessing and guidance and grant that by your grace, the members of our church family may continue to serve you in faith. Preserve the preaching and teaching in this place so that it is faithful to your word. Ensure that your holy sacraments are administered according to your commands and promises. And help us to reach out in love to our community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you prepared a place for your son Jesus in the womb of the Virgin Mary and in the home of Mary and Joseph. Bless our homes and all who dwell in them, that in, your, that in them your word would be made known and your mercy shown. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, hear our prayers for our nation and its government and all those who serve the public good. Give health and confidence to those who serve in positions of authority. Protect and sustain all those who serve in the health and safety professions, as well as those who serve in our military. Grant them what is needed so that through their labors we may receive your healing and protection. Lord, also hear our prayers for the nations of the world, that you would grant peace where there is conflict and bring justice where there is evil. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. Gracious God, you brought the Magi of old to worship your son Jesus, and you have brought us to worship him too. Receive our gifts and give us Jesus in his holy body and blood that we may return home according to your holy way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, from afar, you brought the Magi safely to find Christ and then safely home again. Lord, send your holy angels before all those who travel, that they would be directed always in the ways of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we commend to your blessing and love the times yet to come. Until you bring this life on earth to an end, guard and guide us by your strong arm. Lead us according to your word and renew us in clean hearts that trust you and show love toward our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray. Trust in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our worship now continues as we gather our tithes and offerings and grateful thanks to our Lord and to support the ongoing mission and ministry of his church. you unfaithful come weak and unstable come no you are not alone oh come barren and waiting ones weary of praying come see what your God has done. Christ is born. Christ is born. Christ is born for you. Oh, come bitter and broken, come with fears unspoken, come taste of his perfect love. Oh, come guilty and tidying ones, there is no need to run, see what your God has done. Christ is born, Christ is born, Christ is born for you. He's the Lamb who was given, His promise is peace for those who believe. He's the Lamb who was given, slain for our pardon. His promise is peace for those who believe. So come, though you have nothing. He is the offering, come, see what your God has done. Christ is born, Christ is born, Christ is born for you. Christ is born.
Indeed, Christ was born for you and me, and he graciously gives us now his very body and blood. We now prepare our hearts to receive the Lord's very body and blood, and as we do so, and as you are able, I invite you to stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to give him thanks and praise. and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have given us a new revelation of your glory, that seeing you in the person of your Son, we may know and love those things which are not seen. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you.
a body of Christ given for you. Joel, the very body of Christ given for you. Kelly, the very body of Christ given for you. Rick, the very body of Christ given for you. Neil, the very body of Christ given for you.
Let us pray. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who with loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Happy New Year. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.